My name is Nicholas Denis, and I will be presenting on behalf of myself, Danny French, Sebastian Gilbert, and Natalie Japkowitz, our research titled A Cost-Skew-Aware Predictive System for Chest Drain Management. This is a paper that, um, research that we've done several years ago. Um, it is a short paper and a short talk, so I'll briefly touch on the following. I'll introduce the problem itself, which we cast as a cost-sensitive learning problem, um, our sol proposed solution, uh, which is a genetic algorithm to discover uh, the cost matrix for this problem. We'll also look at the data, um, highlight the fact that it's a class imbalance problem, and very briefly touch on the results. And I highly suggest that if anyone's interested, please um, read the paper, reach out to myself or Natalie Japkowitz for questions. So let's jump in. So the problem itself is related to chest drain management. So this can be, uh, this occurs when, for example, people come in for lung surgery, um, perhaps to remove a tumor, and what happens is the thoracic surgeon will uh, put in a, a, a chest drain device, okay, a tube that goes into their lungs and drains fluid um, and is also related to maintaining uh, airflow, for example. <clears throat> and so the problem is, when is the right time to remove the drain? Um, in the hospital so that the patient can go home. And this research group uh, at the, the Ottawa Hospital, they're very forward thinking and they're very interested in developing AI and machine learning strategies um, to help do uh, decision support systems, for example, for remote communities that may not have access to thoracic surgeons, but these surgeries still have to happen, or um, monitoring them, uh, you know, the chest drain management part as done by the, in the local community. And so this is the kind of the underlying scope for this problem, this project. And so each of these decisions will focus mainly on these three. Uh, remove the drain tube so the patient go home. DPD, discharge of pleural drain, means we can send them home with the device so they can live their norm nor life normally. Um, and then they come back and have it removed. Or they stay in the hospital and maintain the drain tube. Each of these decisions can be made erroneously. And the cost associated to those decisions those errors uh, differ greatly. So for example, suppose the, a drain tube was removed when it shouldn't have, then the patient will have to go back to the hospital, have another drain tube put in, um, and so this is obviously very dangerous and costly. Uh, whereas for maintained drain tube, if we have a patient that could have the drain tube removed, but it isn't removed, um, Essentially, no one wants to stay in the hospital longer than they have to. Uh, it's inefficient use of hospital resources, and essentially someone is using a hospital bed, uh, taking up a hospital bed that uh, they don't need. It's preventing someone else from having that hospital bed. So you can see the wor real-world consequences of these misclassifications. They differ in the cost to both the hospital and the patient. So, okay, we want to do machine learning, we want to do supervised learning on the, this, this data set so that we can help out remote communities. But all, not all errors are the same. So this screams to us as a cost-sensitive uh, learning problem. And for those who are maybe not aware, um, the best way to tackle this, or one way to tackle this, is through a cost matrix. So a cost matrix over here looks something like a, a confusion matrix, where basically the off-diagonal entries, for example this one, represents the cost of misclassifying. So classifying as class A when the truth is class B. Um, so you assign a weight, it's how bad making that error is. Um, so we want to learn this, we want to uh, develop this, um, so that we can build uh, good classifiers that take into account these costs. Now, we're going to be using, their, as our base classifiers, very simple supervised learning algorithms, decision trees and rule learners. And the reason for this is that the surgeons in the healthcare, they really care about interpretability of the uh, the classifiers, the machine learning systems. Um, so they really want to be able to trace, for example, for a decision tree from the root node all the way to the leaf, you know, all the different uh, booleans or conditions that were met or not met and how that was um, uh, used to determine the ultimate classification. For this approach, we use two different baselines, so no cost matrix and a cost matrix that was provided by uh, head of thoracic surgery at the Ottawa Hospital. Um, our proposed solution, we introduce an, uh, an ev a new, unique evolutionary algorithm. It's a multi-objective. Um, so what happens is you have a population of cost matrices, and we're going to evaluate fitness with respect to several different objectives. 
uh, distinct objectives. So for example, we use a false positive rate, precision, positive likelihood, and negative likelihood. All these with respect to the class remove, as well all these with respect to the class DPD, discharge with plural drain. So there's four metrics across two classes, so basically eight metrics. And the idea is um, we will select for the most performant, the most fit cost matrices with respect to each of these um, metrics, each of these perspectives, and then these most fit uh, cost matrices will be paired off um, and they will produce progeny. And one cost matrix might be fit with respect to one metrics and, and another cost matrix might be very fit with respect to a di different distinct metric. And by pairing them off and allowing them to mate, the hopes is that after generation after generation, it'll produce uh, cost matrices that are performant with respect to all the uh, uh, metrics. So very robust. And so um, this is the overall idea. And so besides the most fit cost matrices surviving to the next generation, um, they'll be paired off and the mean of two parents, so two parents will be randomly sampled, the mean of the two parents cost matrix values will also produce a, a progeny, and then we'll basically clone the parents and add Gaussian noise to the off-diagonal entries. Um, and so the idea is that you know, we get from we get very robust cost matrices from this process. And th this is what we end up seeing. The data set itself uh, comprised of 67 patients uh, admitted for uh, pulmonary resection. They have features related to before surgery, during surgery, and after surgery. After surgery, uh, post-operative features rep are represented by a Essentially, every 10 minutes, there's a digital device that's measuring the airflow into these chest drain tubes. Um, and so we do some feature engineering where we look at the, the previous 12 hours. So every time point, every 10 minutes, we look at the previous 12 hours and we construct some uh, statistics like the mean, the median, the min, the max, uh, standard deviation of these airflow qualities. And we use these as features. Uh, the, the data set is highly class imbalanced. So for example, a, a given patient might stay at the hospital, for example, for seven days. So every 10 minutes during those seven days, we have a, an instance of a class. And so most of those instances, the class label will be uh, maintain the chest tube, um, but they'll reach a certain threshold at some point uh, close to the end of their stay at the hospital where they the class then switches over to, for example, remove the chest tube. And so most instances will be of class remain. And so how we handle this is we use different approaches, but we'll only talk about, uh, for this presentation, smoked synthetic minority oversampling. And so how that works is, for smoke, we'll look at the minority class and we'll, we'll say we'll pick two instances, let's say these two, the dark reds, and we generate a new synthetic instance that's a convex combination of the two. So it's basically it's somewhere along a line segment that joins the two points. And what that implicitly assumes is that um, the, the classes are, are separated and they form a convex hull uh, in terms of the interclass labels. That's a strong assumption, but um, pragmatically this works very well for our instance. And moreover, it should be noted that all these synthetic instances generated from the minority sample, minority class, sorry, um, are used purely for training the classifier. We use the synthetic data only to train the classifier, not to test, and all testing is done using the real data. So um, we, we, we don't care if the, the classifier can test well on synthetic data. Who cares about that? What we care about is does it perform well test and validation on real data. And to briefly touch on our results, again, I, highlight, I ask you to, to see the paper if you're interested. We report on the false positive precision specificity for the class remove the false positive, the precision and specificity for the class maintained, as well as the overall accuracy, which is very interesting because it takes all four classes into account, um, and yet uh, not all four classes were optimized over during the cost matrix uh, optimization procedure. Only the class remove and the class DPD, discharge with plural drain, were optimized, so neither was class maintained. We compare for each experiment, and I'll touch on what each experiment is later, um, for each experiment, we compare the um, <clears throat> no, the absence of a cost matrix, the expert provided cost matrix, and our proposed approach. And each experiment type is the same data set, but with different uh, feature engineering, feature selection, etc. So we have only one data set. We want to show that our approach is robust to different kind of 
I guess, representations of the same data. And um, I'll let you look at the results on your own, but it's important to note that accuracy, um, there's a huge difference in accuracy, it's, you know, between 15 and uh, 19 percentage points consistently uh, over the other baseline approaches, mm -hmm. though accuracy was not itself uh, selected for. And so we took this as a, as a um, indicator that our approach worked very well, though we selected in each generation for only uh, cost